And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have a magnificent guest with us today, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than our brother, Brother Ray Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, dear brother. How are you? I'm doing phenomenal, sir. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a conversation with us. The first question that we have for you today, sir, is when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Wow. It was um, April the 28th, uh, 1988, uh, mm. on my campus at McPhetus, uh, Clark, Clark uh, College, then it became Clark AU. Um, I was invited over there by my frat brother, Dwight Calhoun. I had never heard, I've heard something about the nation of uh, Islam, but I was not really that interested in that because I was really a Christian, so I thought. Uh, so I get over there and this brother, I never forget what this brother had on. His name was Tony Muhammad. He's Malik uh, 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 Muhammad now, our West Coast Regional Representative. But it was Tony Muhammad then. And that brother had a gray suit on, a gray and black bow tie, white and black shoes. And he had security around him on April the 28th, 1988. And I was in the Marine Corps then. And I was so fascinated. One, I wanted to know, in my words were, who did this nigga think he is to come on my campus with security? Who is this brother? Because at that point, Brother Josh, I had never seen Black people with that with any type of security around them other than the United States military and uh, the president of the United States. So this brother is on our campus. And I'm like, wow. Uh, so he talked to us. They're about two hours, Brother Josh. And I had always, I had seen him before on the campus, but I was never interested in that. So when Brother Dwight Calhoun, I never forget my brother, I love him to this day because he's the reason why I joined the Nation of Islam. Had I not, had he not invited me, a lost family, had he not invited me to hear Tony Muhammad at that point, then I would not have become a part I don't think of the Nation of Islam and what Brother Tony at that point was talking about was so fascinated because I've been a Christian all my life. So I thought, you know, I knew, I thought I knew the Bible. I represented my church in oratorical contests. I was always involved in church activities. So there again, here is a brother that comes to my campus and could answer. First of all, he talked for two hours. Mm, mm. Damn, is this dude going to be quiet? And then I was so intrigued, not just me, but all of us were so intrigued about what he was saying. And then he stayed two more hours answering all of our questions. And I had never had a brother to answer all of the students' questions because you know students think that we're the smartest people on the planet uh, because we're in college and you know we think we know it all. But that brother was phenomenal, man. And that's the first time I heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked to us by Minister Farrakhan through that man, Tony Muhammad. Oh, praise due to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, shout, and shout out to your friend as well for introdu uh, introducing you and, you know, inviting you. That's great. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister Miriam says, Asim Lekin family. Welcome to mom, Sister Miriam. Thank you all for watching. Can't wait to upload this to YouTube. My next question for you, sir, is once you heard the teachings, what was it about what was it about what Minister Tony was speaking about that made you say this was for you? Well, first of all, he was talking. And there again, I come from a small town, Griffin, Georgia. And I thought I prided myself in knowing a little bit about Black history. Okay, I know about Dr. King. Okay, I know about Harriet Tubman. Okay, I know about the ones that white folks gave us to know about. Uh, but I thought I knew a little something. And this brother was speaking from a a perspective, I never forget when he said, damn in hell, that got me. I said, this nigga up here cussing. And <laughs> I said, this man is cussing and he's talking about God and what he said to us, particularly to myself, was so intriguing. So I'm sitting there listening. Now, first I'm skeptical because he's a Muslim. And then I'm starting, I'm, I'm back reserved. Then I'm started leaning up on my seat. I said, this dude got me, man. And, and the more he talked, 
the more enthused I became with what he was saying because I had never heard anyone talk about God in that manner and introduce you to Jesus in a way that I had never had Jesus introduced to us. Now, I'm a student. I'm, what, 23 there about? And I'm like, wow, this dude is really dropping. And now I'm a military-minded man. I've always been. So I'm looking at the security. When this move, when this dude move, they move. I'm like, why are they doing this? Who ain't nobody gonna bother him? You mm. understand? But unbeknownst to me, that the way that brother was talking and teaching, and those individuals that's really fascinated me, his security was the one that really drew me in. Mm. And then when I found out that those individuals were high school students, because mm. brother Tony was a teacher. Uh, when I came into the Nation of Islam, he mm, taught mm. at Westlake High School. Okay, so okay. Like, and this brother brings high school juniors and seniors up to provide security for him. Yes, I was fascinated and fixated on what he said, but I was more interested in the security that was around him because, again, that's what I gravitated towards because I'm, now, I'm in the Marine Corps listening to this dude. So I'm understanding military, I'm understanding how these individuals are moving and whatnot. But I'm telling you, I had never in my life, in my 23 years of living at that point, heard somebody represent God in the manner they represented God and made it so simplistic that you could understand. I could really go and tell my boys, OK, we smoked a blunt. Let me tell you that. OK, let, let me be one. Let me transparent with you there. Uh, I, we were smoking after all of this right here was over. And I'm trying to sit there and tell them what I had just learned. High as hell. I am mm. beyond high. But I was not too high. Well, I could not remember some of the key points that Brother Tony was talking to us about. And that's when I knew at that point, because I've been in the church all my life, man. I can't tell you what Reverend James used to tell us after he done preached. Mm. 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 Uh, but Brother Tony, I could, man. And, and I could not even get as high as I, as I wanted to get. Because I'm so, I'm so, I'm, I'm just in awe at what this brother was saying. It was magnificent, Josh. I had never heard anybody talk like that, brother. Oh, praise this is like excellent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People are showing you love all around the world. Thank you, all for sending positive energy to Brother Ray. Um, Kelvin, Kelvin Stevenson says, "Tell it," and thank you, everyone else who was watching as well. I wanted to ask you, what made you choose the Marines as opposed to the Navy? or the mm. army or the air mm. force? Interesting question because all of my brothers, my mother have seven children, five boys. Four of the boys went into the military. We was from a very poor family. So uh -huh. when I became a senior in the high school, the Marine recruiter came to my mother and said, uh, I can help y'all out. All he have to do is join. Cause I wasn't going to go to college. I was sick of school. I just so tired of school because again, in my high school, I was always a spokesman representing what I call blackness for what I knew. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to school. The recruiter came over to my mother's house, the Marine recruiter. I never forget this guy back in, uh, it must've been April of 84. And he was talking to my mother about me. And I, and I knew that my brother, Two brothers went into the army. One went into the uh, to the navy. I was always the bad child. I'm, mm. I was the child that would burn down houses, uh, 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 bust out windows, and all this stuff mm -hmm. right here. I wanted attention for of my father because my mother and dad had divorced. So the only way I could get my dad's attention was to do something so just out of the ordinary. Where he'll come over there and whoop my behind, and mm. I was okay with that. So I was bad. And I wanted to be a part of the Marine Corps because it was the baddest, hardest branch of service. And it, it, and their boot camp is the longest. Everybody mm. else is uh, uh, eight to six to eight weeks. The Marine Corps was 12 weeks. Mm. And I'm, I had an ego. I said, man, them niggas can't break me. I'm Ray Hobbs, man. What they talking about? So I wanted to be a part of the United States Marine Corps simply because it was the hardest branch uh, of the military and the longest doing the boot camp. Excellent. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. How, how, because I interview a lot of people, a lot of the brothers who say hoorah and they still wear their hats and things of this nature. Absolutely. How, how important was the Marines training 
into going into the nation train? How important was that? Like, you know, oh, brother Josh, brother, what a beautiful question. As a matter of fact, brother, that that's really a very powerful question because uh, when I decided to become a part of the nation of Islam, I never forget after brother Tony talked and spoke on April 28, 1988, he gave us all his phone number. Everybody got his phone number. And back then, we didn't have cell phones. We had answer machines. Mm, mm. And we had pagers. Cell phones did not. We couldn't afford those cell phones. First of all, they was too big. Second of all, we was poor and couldn't afford them. Mm. So he gave us his phone number, and I called the number. Now, Brother Tony, what made this a special experience to me is that his wife was about nine months pregnant. Mm. And Brother Tony was talking to us for four hours. Mm. And it wasn't until he realized my wife is pregnant, I have to get home. So he he gave all of his number. I called Brother Tony. I kept calling him and I kept calling him. And he would never, I would go to the answering machine because that's what we had back then. And he would never return my call. And it wasn't until I cussed him out on his answer machine, I told him, why would you give me your goddamn number? Oh, excuse mm. me, brother, that's what I said to him. Why would you give me your, your number yes, sir. and not call me back? It wasn't a second after I hung up that he called me. It wasn't a second. So when he called, and the, he, here's how the wow. military played into this, because once I started being introduced to the teachings, I was already trained militarily. I already knew my general orders. The mm, general mm. orders of the United States Marine Corps are the same general orders of the nation of Islam opposed to temple is military. Mm. You understand? To walk my post in a perfect manner and keep it always on the alert is what, that's the second general order in the military. To mm. take charge of my post and all temple property opposed to temple is military property. So mm. I knew all of my 12 general orders. I knew how to drill. I knew how to salute. I knew military etiquette because I'm a part of the of what I thought the greatest branch and the most powerful military there was, the United States Marine Corps. And it wasn't until I really began to come into the nation where I began to subordinate the training uh, of the love that I had for the military, for the Marine Corps, and it was replaced with the love that I'm beginning to have uh, for the nation of Islam. So it wasn't a difficult transition for me, and it's not a difficult transition for most of us who have military background because we already come in disciplined, trained. Uh, as a matter of fact, we as the interview go on, that became an issue. Mm. That became an issue because I did not know that my training that I've already received in the in the United States Marine Corps would become an issue coming to the nation of Islam. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, you know, we came in already saluting came in already knowing your general orders. So this is my first or second time coming to a mosque. So it was from the perspective of them, you know, I don't know why they thought that, but we was agents. Because mm, mm. yeah, I already knew it. I knew the military. <laughs> I knew that. But I can look back over now and laugh about it. But back then, 23 years old, entering, entering into something that was so new, to us, if it was not for the nurturing and the love and the and the and the ministerial compassion that Brother Tony, uh, Brother Malik, Brother Tony then showed us, brother, there's no way possible I would have stayed around because I would I much rather fight you. Mm. Okay, yes sir, yes sir. <laughs> All right, uh, man, praise be to a lot. You spoke earlier of your fraternity. What made you choose your fraternity as opposed to? Alpha, Omega, and or Kappa. What made you choose? The White Calhoun, the same one that brought me into the nation. Let mm. me tell you. It is the White Calhoun, the reason why I, I pledged Phi Beta Sigma. It is the White Calhoun, the reason why I, I went to Clark AU. It is the White Calhoun, the reason why I became a member, a citizen, because I want us to get out that membership thing, because we really a nation. A citizen in the nation of Islam, the White Calhoun, our old so much to that brother because I wouldn't, I would, there's no way possible I would know what I, what I know. He didn't join. He was a sympathizer and a supporter, but I came and heard, I said, man, I got to be a part of this here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you join, you go to the mosque. What, 
how did how did the people once they got over the fact that the perception of you being an agent, what was the climate like? Who was in leadership? Uh, what was the brotherhood like? You know, who trained you? Ooh. What was that like? Oh my God, brother Josh! Now you open up Pandora's box, but I'm gonna travel with you down at this road here. So when I come in, uh, brother Tony was very popular in in the in in Atlanta. Uh, he was already a former captain for Brother Collett when Brother Collett was the minister of Atlanta. When the minister, when when the leader brought Minister Farrakhan brought Brother Collett down to kind of mm. bring the two facets together because there was two mosques here. Brother Collett mm. comes in, bring them all together. Brother Tony was already a, 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 a captain for Brother Collett, mm. so I come in around that around that time. There, this was happening in '87. I come in '88, so. Because Brother Tony was my spiritual father and still is, uh, I will always acknowledge and always pay umbrage to that brother. And he treated us like we were his children. So there was a riff in the mosque during that time. Brother Van was our regional minister. Brother mm. Sadiq was our regional captain. Okay. okay. Now, Brother Sadiq have since transitioned, but Brother Sadiq and the students uh, did not have a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, those students, those of us that were students coming into the nation of Islam, it was not look, looked upon favorably by uh, quite a few people uh, because the, we were students and studying in the same responsibility that an ordinary FOI that does not have, that's not in, in, in college, uh, those responsibilities, carrying the papers and being at the mosque and all those, we didn't necessarily have to do that because we were students. You understand? So I remember the minister saying to those, because uh, we really got beat up real bad, brother, because uh, I love Brother Tony so much. We all did, but I'm going to speak specific of myself, loved him so much. And because of my love for him, you understand? And what he was going through, we kind of got pulled into that. Uh, like a mother and a father in a divorced household. Mm -hmm. You understand where you got the mother over here, and the father over here, and the children are kind of caught up in the middle. Now, mind you, I didn't know the protocol of the nation of Islam. I only knew I loved Brother Tony. I knew that this man was teaching me something I had never heard. And like a child loving a parent, that's the kind of love that I had for Brother Tony, and because Brother Tony was magnificently uh, 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 a pastor for us, he nurtured us, brother, he really did. He was hard as hell on us, don't get that wrong. But he nurtured us, and he loved us, and we fell so deep in love with the way he made us feel. But Brother Tony was not one during that time that was respected in the mosque. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when I came in the nation, Brother Tony was put out the mosque. If you mm. want to be, if, if the truth be told, Brother Tony was put out uh, and Brother Tony worked the college campuses and the brother found so many of us. While I didn't know nothing about no F class and no C class and yes, no yes, other yes. class. I just knew that the brother was classy with the way that he was handling us. So he did not operate from the mosque perspective uh, per se. He came to the campus and he galvanized us and was teaching us. Now, he got back in the mosque because we came to the mosque. But when we came to the mosque, Brother Josh, because of their disdain for Brother Tony, we felt that. Mm. Uh, I, I remember asking Brother Tony because they searched. Now, I was like, what the hell? What? First of all, bro, get your hands up off me. You understand? Because this just don't sit right with me. <laughs> you understand? So when we students came to the mosque, we was kind of kind of searched a little harder than everybody else. And it was due, it was, it was mainly because of our love for Brother Tony and what Brother Tony was going through at that time with the administration. You understand? I didn't know what was happening. All I knew is that when I'm with this man, I feel a certain way. When I go to the mosque, I feel a different way than the way Brother Tony made us feel. But one thing about that brother, uh, he would always. And any question, Brother Tony, I'm talking about, any question that we had that disturbed us, he would always have time to sit down there and walk us through some of the things that we was going through. Uh, and he would see, I thought Brother Tony was the man. Mm. 
<laughs> I didn't want to hear nothing about the minister. Mm. I didn't want to hear nothing about the minister. I just wanted to hear about Brother Tony. But Brother Tony will always keep throwing his man Farrakhan up. And mm. again, I'm I'm a lost found. So I'm trying to wonder, bro, why you why are you talking about this man so much? Damn, bro. I don't see this man. I see you. <laughs> You're the mm. one that's teaching us and teaching us and teaching us. And it wow. wasn't until maybe a month in the training that he had begun to start giving us. I begin to start understanding, oh no, he getting this from something else. Somewhere else, that, but he would always say that. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Minister Farrakhan this and Minister Farrakhan that. And I'm like, wow. But it, we was not really treated, to be honest with you, Brother Josh, we was not treated as hospitably as I thought that we should have been treated. And that's because of what was going on during that time of hmm. us entering the mosque. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so did it ever get better? After a while, let me tell you, brother, this went on for a minute. Uh, it went on for uh, maybe a year thereabout, and the reason why it went on so long now, but the collie had not yet come into the fray. But Tony would always tell me, he said, brother, you, because I always loved military. He said, brother, brother Tony, brother collie was locked up. He was on his way out. And hmm. he said that when you meet this brother right here, I'm telling you, He's going to really change your life because you really going to gravitate towards Brother Khaled. I'm like, I don't see myself loving nobody more than I love you. You understand? And the way you were training us. But Brother Tony knew I was in the Marine Corps as well. So my level of military training was a maybe a little higher than those that had not gone into any military branch or service. When I met Brother Khaled, brother, let me tell you the truth. I, it was instant love. I had never in my life met somebody as militant, uh, as orderly, as, as controlled. Uh, and his aura was such of a, man, it was like, wow, bruh. It was almost frightening, but he never, and brother, I think brother Collett would know that maybe we was a tad bit, not frightened, but just amazed that this man Bro, let me tell you, I fell in love with Brother Khaled instantly. Mm -hmm. So Brother Khaled and Brother Tony, Brother Khaled is out now. Him and Brother Tony are, because they he was Brother Tony's captain. I was Brother Tony was Brother Khaled's captain during that time, 87 there, about I didn't come in until 88. So they they reconnected back up. And uh again, there was a lot of um, I'll say mixed feelings and misunderstanding and uh, in the mosque 15 at that particular point, we're coming in not knowing what's really happening, but we're seeing that there, and you know, when, when, when mom and dad are fighting, you know what's going on. As a child, you're affected by that. So uh, it became, at one point, Brother Tony's crew and the mosque crew. Mm -hmm. You understand? And it was that big this divide, that, big divide uh, that the minister had to come in uh, really and kind of put that thing back into play. But Brother Sadiq, who was our regional captain, if I was to be honest with you, uh, Brother Josh and the listeners, I did not have the best uh, 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 feeling for Brother Sadiq because Brother Sadiq really, I thought at that particular point, Brother, you should really look at us as new individuals coming into something we don't understand, but we didn't feel I know I didn't feel, and I know uh, quite other brothers and sisters did not feel the same type of love coming from somebody as high up as we, I didn't know, again, I didn't know nothing about no region captain. I didn't know nothing about no military structure, but I knew the brother was in charge. You understand? And it became brother Tony over here and, and brother, brother Tony and the crew over here and brother Van and Sadiq and the crew over there. And it became this major, this, the divide, man, and every time that we thought that Brother Tony should be speaking or doing something that he did not get that opportunity uh, to do that. And I remember uh, Mississippi burning, Brother Josh, 1989 is the opportunity that I had to meet Brother Farrakhan for the first time. Uh -huh. Again, we didn't have cell phones back then, and we didn't have the technology that we do have now. So I'm learning now. I'm training now, I'm going to class. I'm trying to, you know, I'm in the processing class, but because again, they're about our military training, 
you understand, and being around Brother Tony and being around Brother Collins, you can't help but to learn. Mm, because mm. Brother Tony was a school teacher. <laughs> and the way that he would teach us is like a classroom type environment. And you could not be around that brother, Tony Muhammad. Uh, you couldn't be around him and then learn the teachings, brother, because he would always drill those things in you. But the first time I met Brother Tony, I said to myself and to Dwight, the one that brought me in, I'm going to be over that brother security. Mm, I said, I'm mm. going to be chief of his security uh, in the not so distant future. Shortly thereafter, maybe two, three months of uh, being around Brother Tony uh, and then the other students that came along, we had a we had a squad, Brother Josh, I mean, a, a, a serious squad of brothers that that's why they said Brother Tony's crew and Brother Van and Sadiq's crew uh, and Brother Tony, from our perspective, we had to always have shine shoes and a, a pen. And I always, we would always have a book in our mm -hmm. hand. Brother Tony would never clean shirts, uh, uh, greeting one another, loving on one another, uh, uh, just really, really always challenging one another from a teaching perspective. He was really, really developing and training us. So we kind of stood, you know, it, it made us stand out. Uh, among what I would say not to be the elite. We really were, brother. We were mm. real good at that. And we and we learned. And Brother Tony and his work on that college campus was monumental. I mean, Brother Collett, Brother Tony had hundreds of us in the AU Center, brother. Uh, uh, I remember there was a time that Brother Tony and Brother Collett, because at that point I get to the brotherhood of the black man, but we brought out more, <laughs> Brother Tony brought out more students to the mosque than probably the mosque had as members. Mm, uh, mm. He brought, I'll never forget the line where you said be me on 15 Martin Luther King. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, and we met there. And that line went all the way back up to Pascals, the old Pascals, mm, trying to mm. get into the mosque. And those were nothing but students. And these individuals was because of the work that Brother Tony was doing on the college campus that so fixated us and we wanted to come and hear more about it. But then a group of us became what I said, I would be over Brother Tony's security and we was, I pledged my fraternity and then I began to start living with Brother Tony for about two and a half, maybe three years. And at that point mm -hmm. I was learning so much, uh, you understand, but that was a major riff. Uh, when I came into the nation of Islam, actually, I tell people all the time, my first five years, I was put out mm. more than I was in, yeah. but it did not stop uh, the love that I had for the minister because Brother Tony would always, and Brother Khaled, would always teach us about Brother Farrakhan, the love of Black people, and all of that there. So uh, it, it was a it was a tumultuous experience my first five years in, but I wouldn't change that for the world. Well, praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, so I want to say, you said Mississippi burning, 1989. You meet the minister. What is the circumstance and how did that come about? Well, in Atlanta during that time, Brother Josh, there was no motion, no movement that I was not a part of by mm. God's grace. That's because of the training Brother Tony and Brother Collett uh, was giving us. I remember that my first Savior's Day was Savior's Day 1988, the overwhelming event. We're supposed yes, to enter the mosque at that point, and the minister did not allow us to enter the mosque because it was not yet ready. So we had mm. a big tent on the outside, mm. and the minister gave the nation, uh, I think, 90 or 120 days. I know from October to February, we was going to all come back and that's when we used to have two Savior's Days in October and in February. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, I go to save. I go to Savior's Day my first my first time, and one I just had never experienced that type of that type of love and 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 all of that. So while up there, I kind of missed my train of thought. But while up there, uh, what was I on? Mississippi Burning, so nineteen eighty nine. Eighty nine. So so now, what was that? Mississippi burning. You said Mississippi, Mississippi burning. burning. So 
we're training, brother. Kylie and them had trained us very well. So we learned how to drive and maneuver and all this right here. So the ministers in Mississippi, that's when I knew the power of that man. Brother Collett got, I was on the stage, brother. It was brother Darren Lofton, brother Darren Muhammad. We all went up there. You understand? We driving in a caravan with Minister Farrakhan uh, and brother Van and brother Tony and some other people. They was in one car and I had the security car. Mm. Our role was to ensure that there were no cars to enter into the caravan. So I never forget Brother Van and Brother Tony are in the car with me and with us that was driving, the driver, the co-pilot with us. And Brother Van was kind of, uh, it, was, it was some conversations that was happening. And it was to the point where y'all need to get out. Y'all don't understand. So Brother Tony told Brother, he said, Brother, watch this. You understand? So as we blocking traffic off and the traffic about to exit off, you understand? We know at what point we're going to, have to fall into the caravan. So we get to uh, to the to the hotel where the minister is. Brother Collett, Minister Farrakhan first had just tore up that that lecture, brother. Mm, mm. I'm on the stage with the minister. I'm over off to the left, but a colleague got us on the stage to be part of the security. And Minister Farrakhan was rocking. If they don't know that lecture, I would ask them to go get Mississippi burning mm. when Minister Farrakhan called for the destruction of Mississippi because they had killed a Muslim. Yes, sir. And I remember the media was trying to get up and leave and Minister Farrakhan told them all to sit down. Mm. And I'm not through yet. And I got, got mm. I'm like, damn, you understand? So I just hear this man talk and teach so hard on the stage, Brother Josh. And then we go to his room. Brother, brother, go, go to the minister's room. Brother Kevin, myself, yeah, brother Kevin Muhammad, because he was part of the team that we had, and myself. We go into the room, brother Khaled gets us in, brother Tony is there, and I'm looking at the minister, and the minister's entertaining whomever that was in the room. But the way, now I'm young in the nation, the way the minister was sitting, I kind of thought the minister was sitting kind of, you know, in a feminine type way, because his legs was crossed in a certain way. So I'm like, why is he sitting like this? Why is he sitting like that? And God is my wish. I don't know how this man is able to tune in. You understand, Minister Park? At that point, I just did not know. So Brother Collett and Brother Tony is in there. So Brother Collett's is pushing Brother Kevin and myself to get closer to the minister to hear what he was saying. And just at that time, as he pushing up, Brother Farrakhan stood up. And he came over to where we were. And Brother Collett introduced, because he knew Brother Tony and he knew Brother Collett. So Brother Collett introduced Brother Kevin and myself to our Brother Farrakhan. And Brother, I never have forget, I had on, because I didn't used to wear socks back then, Brother Josh. I thought I had sexy ankles. So okay. I didn't wear socks. Okay. So when I go, I have this Nehru, this Nehru suit on with no collar. So we're in the room with the minister and the minister's introduced. I said, brother minister, it's a pleasure to meet you. I, uh, he said, no, brother. I know I said, I'm honored to meet you. He said, no, brother Ray. He called, the, I don't know how he remembers our name. Mm -hmm. No, brother Ray, I'm honored to meet you. So the minister pulled me into his bosom and he put my head in his chest. And then he said that, brother, you look like a diplomat. Because I had mm -hmm. one of, the, one of the, the, the suits that he had on. Uh, you understand? I said, well, thank you very much. And then the engine, brother Collie introduced brother Kevin. But here's the thing with that too. Brother Kevin had, man, had, had brother Kevin is an artist. He had done a drawing for brother Farrakhan. Mm. And it was given to brother Farrakhan and, and at the Omni, the uh, added up lecture. Mm. Brother Kevin gave that drawing to brother Farrakhan. So when brother Farrakhan knew who had done that, brother Kevin was the one the minister invited Brother Kevin to a national labor's meeting. Mm. You understand? So I'm sitting there, and Brother Brother Collis said, Brother Farrakhan, can Brother Ray come as well? He said, oh, most definitely Brother mm. Ray can come. So Brother Farrakhan invites Brother Kevin and myself to a national labor meeting in 1989. It was during the Thanksgiving holidays. And this is the time where I thought for the first time 
that I heard Minister Farrakhan vindicate Brother Tony because of what the hell that Brother Tony had been going through from the time that I came in up until the time that we saw Brother Farrakhan elevate Brother Tony and made Brother Tony one of his ministers at that particular point, giving Brother Tony the permission to speak anywhere that he was invited. Uh, you understand? And, uh, and it, it really had me in tears because Brother Josh, we was going through a lot during that time. And again, we're learning. And all I knew is that my father was being hurt. My father was being uh, mistreated. My father was going through some things. And all I wanted to know from Brother Farrakhan, please just, just help him. Uh, because I was in, I, I, we just love Brother Tony, man. And for us to see what the minister did, because he brought Brother Van and Brother Tony up, uh, and he began to start dealing. Anybody that was there during that time, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Your father was, was there. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm. so he elevated Brother Tony and allowed Brother Tony to become a minister. He made Brother Tony one of his ministers. And he could go and speak wherever he wanted to speak as long as he let the minister of that particular city know that he was in that city. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. You're teaching, Brother Ray. And thank you, everyone who's watching. Uh, people are showing you love all around the world. And thank you for bearing witness, Brother Ray. Thank you for your honesty, your transparency. Thank you, Sister Naima. Welcome Salam. Thank you, Brother Mike Stanley Sr. Welcome Salam from the Mike God. Thank you all very much. Brother Ray, you have... A lot more questions for you because we want to stay right there. Dr. Khaled, yes, Menace, and all of that. We have a brief 60-second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. We are grateful for every like, share, and subscription. Thank you for every anonymous cash app as well. We're coming right back to our brother, Brother Ray. Thank yes, you all sir. very much. One second. And we are live with the People's Podcast. Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out if you need any of that. Sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. Sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me Children's Book and Coloring Book. My Father's Book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ. My two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. Right back to our brother, Brother Ray Muhammad. Okay, excellent. And everyone who is watching, please let us know which city you all are watching from. And if you have any guest suggestions, by all means, put those in the comments. Thank you very much. Right back to Brother Ray. Now, Brother Ray, you said the minister could tune in. How did you come to that realization? When you said, what, what's the question now? The, you said the minister could tune in on you. How yes, did sir. you come to that realization? What happened? The minister made, I can't recall exactly what he said, but what he said made me to understand that what I was thinking about the way that he was sitting, you understand, because he mentioned something about love and, and uh, God, I wish I could recall exactly what he said, but it let me know that what I was thinking at that particular point, the minister knew exactly what it was. Freak, his name was Josh. I'm young. At first time meeting this man, I'm like, my God, did he just read my mind? Mm, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. You understand? So, yeah, I, I, I kind of knew it at that point that the brother was able to tune in to a whole lot of stuff. And when the minister doing that Mississippi burning, when he said what was going to happen and it happened, I knew at that point no one had to tell me anything about who Brother Farrakhan was. I knew and became ever more clear to me that that man is backed by God. I don't care what nobody say, and could nobody change the way, and I'm on a college campus now, I'm, I'm always debating students, because that's what we do. But also, I used to fight a lot, who and Brother Tony used to, <laughs> used to yes, fight. Uh, you know, when you learn something as a child, Brother Josh, uh, you just so in amity with what you're learning, you want everybody to know it. So I'm on a college campus in a AU Center campus. You have a, a the the theology school over there, ITC. So I and my team, I would call it my team, but they was really a team that we put together for Brother Tony's security, which I'll talk a little bit about. But I used to go over to ITC, go over there and debate the, the theologians over there. Mm, mm, uh, mm. What I was learning from the teachers, and it was always a fight, <laughs> a fight, sometimes physical fight. 
would literally break off and Brother Tony would come and get us and, and reprimand me severely about going over there starting fights because that's exactly what I went over there to do, start the fight and challenge them based on what I was learning. Yes, sir. Well, I'm, let, let's, stay, let's stay there, Brother Ray. What, can, what advice would you give to the young students on the college campuses about how to articulate the teachings of Osama Elijah Muhammad, get the point across, but not necessarily start a fight? Uh, uh, live the teachings. Mm. Because on the college campus, you have a whole lot of stuff going on. Now, I came into the nation and also pledged in a fraternity as well. So I was part of the Greek life. You understand? A college campus is a universe and a community all in of, in of itself. You have a lot of distractions on a college campus and a, most college campus, particularly the AU Center, uh, females outnumber males from 13 to one. So all mm -hmm. of those distractions that you have, you understand, being part of Greek life, being part of the college life, you understand, but what kept us grounded is one, the example Brother Tony set for us and then us learning and studying because we became so powerful as students on the campus over there during the time that I was in school that we had our own study group. There was well mm -hmm. over a hundred of us uh, that was involved with the study of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught to us by the minister and the example that Brother Tony set. So I would, I would, if, if there's any advice I could give to the young students who are learning the teachings, Yes, the teaching is going to make you right. arrogant at first. I don't care what nobody say. When you start learning who you are, it's going to make you angry because you've been lied to all your life. You're going to want everybody to know what you want them to know. And like a baby learning to walk, we're going to fall and stumble a lot of times. We're going to make a lot of mistakes, you know, in our, our expressions of the teaching. Charge it to our head, our heart being in the right place. We just have to grow and learn how to handle the weight of the wisdom that we are learning because it's a weighty thing. And you know, with your mouthpiece, you can pull, if you're not careful, you can pull females. You can start being, you know, manipulative with these teachers. I'm telling you what we what, what, what can happen. And if you're not around the brotherhood always, here's the thing, there's no way possible on a college campus in a college experience that you can be a solo Muslim by yourself without mm. the strength of the brotherhood. You cannot mm. do it. That's just mm -hmm. too many distractions, too many females around there, too much temptation, too much weed drinking and partying and having fun. You're going to have to connect with somebody that thinks like you or the wickedness of that society is going to pull you in because I'm in the name. I'm, I'm coming in and I'm still getting pulled in. You understand? I'm still going to the Greek parties. Uh, you understand? I'm processing in, but not quite in. So I'm like, wow. But it was the group of brothers. That I was always around because all of us in, in, in school. So we decided to come together and form a group of, of team that was responsible for Brother Tony's security detail. And we treated that man like that man was Louis Farrakhan. One no doubt about it. I remember Brother Josh, Brother, Brother Tony, we had to take him to Chicago. And Brother Tony was flying back in. From at that point, that's when you can go in the airport, you can have all that nine pre nine pre nine 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 one one. Uh, so we could go in and brother Tony, I had about a hundred men. Mm, mm. Uh, I was gonna bring brother Tony in mm. just like we would bring brother Farrakhan in because the minister was teaching, yeah, you do all this for me, but what about for one another? You understand? Mm. So brother mm. Tony personified the love of the minister from my perspective. Now, somebody else may say something different, but I'm telling you how Brother Ray felt. I love that man. And that man would always teach us about the minister. And mm -hmm. the more he teach about the minister, the more in love with him we became. So mm -hmm. I wanted to treat him like we would treat Brother Farrakhan. So, and it scared Brother Tony to death. He had not had that level of security. When Brother Tony, we walked Brother Tony, I got, I was getting him off the plane, brother. We brought him in. I had marked and unmarked men. Mm -hmm. I had class C men, yes, class sir. A men, and I had some come on with it men. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, I was trained at that point by Brother Collard as well. And there's always a group of brothers that the that's the, the scene don't even know that they exist 
you say take off you know that they do they are there so as brother tony was walking in there was men on the phone and whatnot men looking like they were just uh, that he had no idea but every time he walked by somebody would join them you understand the caravan got so big you understand the security detail got so big it was for nothing so brother tony looked back and i said brother minister we got to keep going brother i got to mm. get you safely to this vehicle so we get in the elevator there was so many of us that we broke the elevator Mm, mm, so mm, the mm. brothers, because I had men all over the place, brother, by God's grace, because that's how I visioned how we would bring Minister Farrakhan in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so if I'm going to love the minister like that, there, then I got to love this man who I think taught me how to love brother Farrakhan. Uh, and that's brother Tony Muhammad. I mean, brother Malik, I would never, ever uh, forget the love and the teachings and the training that that brother uh, showed us, not just me, a lot of us. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Speaking of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, one of my uh, favorite you know, people in the history of the world, not just the nation of Islam, what was it like? What's your favorite memory of Dr. Khaled? Hmm. Wow, there's a couple, but the one that is my favorite minister, uh, my favorite memory of him is when we was, he was teaching me how to drive. I was always around Brother Collin because Brother Tony at that point had gotten a job. He was, he was the uh, something for big brother, big sisters. And so he had gotten a job. So I was always available to be around Brother Collin so much. And I remember Brother Collin said, I'm gonna teach you with two men, how we're gonna take over this building. And this building got about 40 floors to it, brother Josh. I'm thinking this man is absolute to have lost his mind. He's smoking something. I don't know what he on. So how can two men take over this building? We walk into the building and brother Khaled would tell you how to walk. He would show you how to move. Uh, he was so meticulous in everything that he did, brother. Uh, so attention to detail that Brother Khaled would see a piece of paper that you did not see and then question you as to why you missed that. Mm -hmm. So we walk into the building. He greets the individual. We get on the elevator and go all the way up to the 40th or so. It had about 40 floors on it. Did not have a 13th floor. And Brother Khaled at that point said, that's the devil's number and no building that white folks may have a 13th floor on the elevator. I said, okay, yes, sir. We get there. Every floor going down, we get off. Every floor introduced whatever the reception was at the reception table. Before we got down to the first floor, they knew that we was on our way down. Mm. And he said, Brother Ray, this is how you take over a building and you mm. didn't even mm. think it's your mere presence. Because all of these floors that you've all, we've already come down and gotten off, they've already told them that we're in the building. Mm, mm, mm. So just two men was just that important. And Brother Collett, he left me, I, again, the, the team that we had, Brother Josh, there was a squad of us, about 12 of us. And we was kind of our own little squad because, again, we're still trying to find our space in Mosque 15. And because there's still that dissension that was going on between Brother Collett, Brother Tony, and us, you understand it because we was uh, committed to Brother Tony and Brother Collett, uh, you understand, because I saw in them the love that they had for the ministers, not that the other ones didn't. I just wasn't around them as much as I was around. So we became our own little squad, you understand. So Brother Collett would always be with us, training specifically me. I gravitated to Brother Collett so much so that uh, uh, when Brother Collett was going through, it's another piece, going through what he was going through, you understand, uh, that brother, I guess this is the most profound moment of Brother Collett's and my relationship is that I had never seen someone as strong as that brother there cry. I had mm. that blew my mind, brother, because of the trials and the tribulations that Brother Collett was going through there about at that particular time. And he would confide in me and I'm just a little old Ray. I'm just a little bit, I don't know, I can't handle that, bro. 
I just know I love the minister. I know you taught me to love the minister. And I know you told me, brother, that if anybody, that we are to kill anybody that goes against Brother Farrakhan, that's even us. And we made a pact to never leave the minister no matter what. You mm, understand? Mm, mm, mm. Said to me one time, we was talking as he was going through his pain, brother. And he said, Brother Ray, I'm Malcolm X. Now he taught me very well about Malcolm X. You understand? We, we was always together. I said, Malcolm X, I said, Brother Collett, you said that Malcolm died a hypocrite. He said, I'm, I am, I'm born to refine Malcolm's history. Mm, he said, mm. but Malcolm left his father. I'll never leave my father. Mm. And I held Brother Collett. I never forget, bro. I held Brother Collett to those words as strong as he was, as 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 I admired him tremendously, brother, for teaching me so much, but I was not afraid to remind yeah. my brother of what he told me when Brother Collett decided that he would do what he would do, you understand, and begin to start leaving and pulling away from the man that you taught me to love. I told Brother Collett, man, there's no way possible that I can, uh, I believe you to say the things about the minister that I hear you say when you taught me how to love that man. Mm. Uh, you brother Collett, I said, brother Collett, you are, I said, I said it, I said it, I said, you're a damn hypocrite. Mm. And he said to me with, with tears in his eyes, bro, he said, no, brother Ray, I'm just hurt. Mm. Brother, let me tell you, brother Josh, to this day, brother, even the memory of that brings me it just brings me to a certain frame of mind because I just had never heard it. It was, it was, it was a life changing experience for me. You understand to see him hurt so bad. Uh, you understand then for him not to smack me. <laughs> he knew I was, he knew I was young and he knew I was inexperienced. You understand because we don't have the, you know, the, the insight to say who's a hypocrite and who's not. Uh, you understand? It's just out of my anger and out of my hurt for what I thought he was doing for the man that you taught me to love. You taught me to love Brother Farrakhan. You said mm -hmm. love him no matter what. If your mother go against Brother Farrakhan, you go against your mother. If your mm -hmm. children go against the mm -hmm. minister, mm -hmm. he said you go against your children. You tell them get there. Just man. So I just I I, I couldn't I couldn't handle that. So those are some of the moments that I remember about my brother uh, that I will forever hold near and dear to me, man. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And of course, may Allah be pleased with Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. But I wanted to ask you, what time period is this trial? Is this, like, what time period is this particular trial that you're referring to? So we're in 89. So I come in in 88. Uh, so we, this here is around 2000, okay. they're about uh, 2001. Mm. I, I am, I am, I'm seeing Brother Collett pulling away. He's hurting. Uh, there's a lot that I could say that I choose not to say about what I'm witnessing. And I'm asking Brother Collett with all of that pain that I see you're in, you have the number to the palace, Brother Collett. You have the number to the minister, man. Uh, why don't you just go around everybody uh, and, 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 you know, and, and, and uh, if you're saying that they're blocking you, I don't know if they are. I don't know if they are or they are not. I don't know. But I know this. You have a number to the minister. And you are to pick the phone call up and call the minister. Man, and he said, Brother Ray, I've done that. So this is around 2000, 2001, thereabout. Uh, and I'm witnessing because I know I was a I was a restaurant manager at a Burger King, and Brother Collett told me came to my job. I'm running the unit. He came to my job and I talked with him. He said, "Brother, uh, I'm going to get this big palace just like the the palace in uh, Chicago." I said, mm. "All praises belongs to a lot, dear brother." And he said that I need you to come and and live there with me in 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 that house. I mm. said, "Yes, sir." And he said that uh, we'll do it like it's done in Chicago. 
I said, well, brother Khaled, you know, uh, yes, sir, if that's what you want wanting me to do, you understand, but I don't see how we're going to replicate uh, what you say Chicago is doing uh, because we are to, you know, support our headquarters. Uh, and if you want to get something uh, just like Chicago, just give the minister a call and go to Chicago, uh, sir. Uh, and he asked me, would I, would I leave the nation? i never forget. He asked me, would I leave the nation? And join mm -hmm. him. I don't think I'd ever lead the nation because I'm taught once you become a part, a citizen in the nation, that's about like leaving America. How can mm. you, how can you be on that? You understand? I'm born and raised here. America is the, is the country that I'm born in. Yes, and sir. the nation is the country that I'm, I'm reborn in. I could never leave that. Now I leave foolishness. You understand? Individuals in the mosque that may not necessarily understand. I'll leave that. But I'll never leave uh, the nation of Islam, and I'll never, ever leave Minister Farrakhan, no matter what, dear brother. So uh, he said, fine. And at that point, I thought that was my trial. Because some months later, it's just out of the blue, brother Josh. He said, so you passed that test. Mm. So I'm wondering, you know, because this, this months later, so I'm thinking I have done something because Brother Kyle will always call me out three o'clock in the morning and meet him at a particular place. And if I'm one minute late or if I'm not there 15 minutes early, I'm late. He give you the story about there was a fight and everybody was died. And if you was there, if you had been there, then you could have saved us and mm -hmm. all of this. So it made me really respect being on time by being early. You understand? So this is six months there about. So I'm wondering where is this coming from? And then he told me, he said, brother, I thank you. I thank you uh, for not leaving the minister. I said, Brother Collett, can't nobody, I don't care what, get me to leave Brother Farrakhan. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And man, we got so much, so much comments and questions. Thank you all very much for showing love to Brother Ray. But I wanted to ask you so you pass the test, you don't leave. Then was that like your last time being with Dr. Collett? Like, what, 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 no, what? no. Okay. no. I was always during that time, Brother Josh, around Brother Collett. I would see him. These, these are maneuvers Brother Collett would do with us. Now, I'll never forget. Now, over on the south side of Atlanta in the College Park area, there was a movie theater that was over there. Tropical Paradise is the restaurant. Then the movie theater sat over there. We took about 100 to maybe 200 men to the movies. My detail was to go and get the tickets for all of us, because we was going to go see a movie together. Brother, we stepped down the movie theater. Mm, mm, mm. We stepped down. The, these are the maneuvers that Brother Collett would do. We'd be in the streets of downtown Atlanta. Uh, Brother Collett had a Rolls Royce. Actually, he had a couple of them because he left one of them with us. Mm. A Rolls Royce, and he would pull up on individuals. We had this red light, and this they call him a bomb. I call him our brother that need a little bit more love. The guy hit Brother Collins' window and asked for some change. And Brother Collins said, you want some change? I'll give you some goddamn change. i give you this to change your mind, change your... So Brother Collins started going off, and I'm like, God, the dude just asked. I'm like to myself, he just asked. <laughs> I thought he went overboard, Brother Josh, but I'm sitting there like, wow. And he would get out of his car, man, in a suit, and Brother Kyle would actually lay in the streets with his people. This is how I know the man really loved black people. Uh, beyond that thick exterior that most people saw of Brother Kyle, his heart was so genuine and so pure, and he really had the love of black people in his heart, man. So there was many maneuvers uh, that I would go on with Brother Kyle, and he would uh, go on to uh, to train and teach me. As a matter of fact, that white military suit that he had on, because that's the Nehru collar. See, I'm a Marine. That's part of our yes, uniform. Those yes, dress blue yes, part of our uniform. So I wanted me a uniform just like that. <laughs> I wanted to look like Brother Collett in that uniform. And he said, Brother, in order to put that uniform on, then you must have gone through some of the battle scars that I have gone through to, be, to either qualify yourself to be able to wear that. He said, just stick to the uniform that you have. 
Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Powerful. Yes, sir. We uh, Thank you very much for this great history, your transparency, your honesty. Uh, we really respect that. Shout out to everyone who's watching the People's Podcast. Brother Kente, who always shows love to the podcast, says, I saw him dear family. He worked at the Burger King when Brother Ray was the manager. See? That's how we all connected. <laughs> Praise be to a lot. Thank you. Thank you for showing love, Brother Kente. Yes, sir. Thank you to Brother Musa, Sister Auntie, Sister Hope, Brother Nelson Ramos, Brother uh, Duke. I mean, yeah, Brother Duke. Thank you, everyone, who shows love to people's podcast on our YouTube family as well. Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. So now, fast forward. What What is... Uh, there's a documentary called The Ghost of College on YouTube. I watched the whole thing. I always read the books. You know, I interviewed Malik Zulu. So people yes, who was sir. around them, people who did security for him, all, all of that. What is the, the biggest takeaway that you have from being around Dr. Khaled for so many ups and downs of his life? What's the biggest takeaway that, that you think people should have for history's sake on, on him? Patience, brother. Brother Josh. Brother Khaled was one of the greatest generals I've ever studied. Brother Khaled was one of the most faithful brothers that I saw. I can't speak on what everybody else has saw, saw, but what I saw, one of the most faithful students of Minister Farrakhan, man. This man, of course, Brother Tony had already laid the foundation in my life. Brother Khaled began to start building on it militarily. For mm -hmm. I never saw myself as a minister in the nation. I saw myself as a defender of the one that would deliver the word. You understand? I saw myself as what I saw Brother Khaled to be, although he's one hell of a minister, brother. He really is. But from the military perspective that I loved about him, that's what I gravitated towards the military. You understand? So I was the, I would just ask, man, that uh, when trials come at us, brother, Sometimes we have to just be quiet and quiet our mind and leave everybody else alone because here is the thing, the individual going through the trial, although we may be able to get some advice from somebody else, but that somebody else that advising us is not the one going through the trial. Mm, and mm. oftentimes they give it to us from their perspective and from what they would do. So what I learned from the brother colleague experience because I studied Malcolm and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I felt as though that I relived, I, I mean, I had an opportunity to get an aspect into that part of our history of the nation of Islam with Brother Khaled and Minister Farrakhan, because I was real close to Brother Khaled. As a matter of fact, I even got into some, some fights defending my brother. But here's the thing about Brother Khaled that I know Minister Farrakhan always loved that man because Minister Farrakhan gave instructions through your father and through Brother Mustafa, who is our now our supreme, that wherever Brother Khaled goes, he is to be secured. Mm. That is what the minister said. I used to get in trouble behind that because I told people, I don't give a damn what you say. Your instructions does not outweigh the instructions coming from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to us and how you understand it is how you understand it. I'm going to hear it and obey it and then hopefully understand it come to me down the road somewhere. But I'm going to defend Brother Khaled. And that's what we did. We secured him uh, with our life, brother. There were some instances that it, it was going to go down. Mm, mm, mm. But Brother Minister told us to secure him wherever he was. And your father and Brother Mustafa, when your father was supreme and Brother Mustafa was the assistant supreme, they came down. That's mm. when it was taking place. Van, Brother Van's crew and Brother Tony's crew. So your father, the supreme and assistant supreme, had to come down to kind of bring the, the house in order. And I'll never forget your father said to me uh, that, Brother, you keep doing what you're doing. And Moose said, Brother Moose, I can't call him Brother Moose, uh, uh, but the Supreme Captain said, yes, uh, brother, uh, brother, and he said, Brother Captain, they had not made me a captain yet, brother, mm, but mm. Brother Mustafa called me. And he mm. said, continue to do the job that you're doing because we brought more people by God's grace under Brother Tony's direction into the nation than a whole lot of brothers. Mm. Uh, yeah, and we was the number one fisher of brothers 
As a matter of fact, Brother George and all of those, Brother Richard, Rashad, all of those, uh, uh, the first officer, Brother Terrence, I brought him in the nation, brought him his first meal. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah understand. Mm -hmm. There was a lot there, man. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, 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 just sometimes we just got to get out of the way of everybody else's trial and not to inject into that uh, lest we find ourselves entering into an aspect of a person's trial that's not ours. Oh. Yeah. Excellent advice. Praise be to a lot. Thank you, everyone, for showing love to Brother Ray on the People's Podcast. And I'm glad, first of all, thank you, salute to you for always the recruitment and the training and things of that nature. Brother Richard, who trained uh, many people in Atlanta, is staple of Atlanta history, me being around him, working with him and listening to him. I came to, from Naperville to Atlanta. I didn't know nothing about right. the workings of Atlanta, the mass politics, none of that. Brother Richard would be maneuvering and doing moves and things that very always on top of his thing. He say, Brother Ray, Brother Ray talk. I learned from Brother Ray. I learned about the K. I learned how to call it. Boom. I was like, okay. So she has to get up said, I didn't understand the connection. And it was like, boom. Train Brother yes. Richard. Okay. Praise be to a lot. That's excellent. Yes, sir. And I also wanted to make sure on that note that I thank you publicly for looking out with Let Us Make Man for the Atlanta FOI drill team. That you Absolutely. all have this opportunity to perform uh, with uh, Ronnie DeVoe being there, Derek Bozeman, all of the people who were there, the celebrities. You always treated the FOI. We wore FOI uniforms. Absolutely. Nothing but the highest respect. We didn't put no celebrity above the Atlanta drill team. Yeah. Get us the, hook us up with the Chick-fil-A and the, the sponsorship. Absolutely. So, man, we thank you, Brother Ray, for that. And always shout out to Headbuster Security and the, the entertainment and all. Hiring, hiring us. That meant a lot to me personally. So thank yeah. you for looking out with the drill team and keeping us employed on many on many times when things were tight. So I appreciate that. We'll make sure we Acknowledge that publicly, Bro Ray. Yes, sir. My next question for you is: You said you had, um, you said you wanted to discuss cancer. Could you let us know what took place? Wow. Two thousand eight, brother. Two thousand eight, May the second. I began to start being sick. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was in Chicago because I was going to run Salam's restaurant. My 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 professional background is restaurant management. Mm. And but not for the life of me understand how we could build a $5 million edifice and not find anybody to run that edifice to be profitable. Uh, so I was in Chicago. I began to start feeling a little ill. I had moved up there. I had to come back home. Uh, I'll never forget my Derek Bozen is my best friend. We have mm. been another since uh, they took over Morris Brown College and we was there. And I was feeling real, real bad. Uh, and I was looking a little pale and whatnot, and I never forget Derek saying, bruh, uh, he called, we have some friends, Dr. Klavik is one of his physician friends, and he gave brother Dr. Klavik the symptoms of what I was, how I was feeling, uh, and brother Klavik said to him, go get him checked out immediately, so I mm -hmm. remember May the 2nd, my insurance didn't kick in on my job until May the 8th. So Dr. Klavik was able to maneuver some things and some tests that I could get. Uh, and then I had to go and see a specialist. And once I saw that specialist in May and I was diagnosed, I never forget, brother. I had went from, at that point, I might've been 175, 180, and I was losing weight so drastically. It's about like the, uh, the, the, the uh, what is it, the, uh, oh, what's that group? Uh, oh. TLC, uh, the AIDS group. And when you look in the mirror and then you see yourself one way. And, oh, and yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. That's how I was seeing myself. And I was losing weight so drastically. And then I go to see the specialist. And I never forget uh, the doctor. I forget her name. But I remember the nurse name. The nurse name was not Nurse Nancy. And she mm -hmm. was a white Caucasian. Now, when I came in the nation, I hated white folk, brother. Let me tell you. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God, what a passion. But when that when my doctor diagnosed me with cancer, I was mm. at stage three, knocking on stage four door. Mm. Uh, and I cussed her out and put her out of the room. I cussed because I was so hurt and so devastated behind that. And then Nurse Nancy, I never forget. That woman moved the doctor out 
and she would always peep in the room to see if I was ready to receive the doctor and her again. So Nurse Nancy asked, asked, could they come back in? I said, not her, you, you come in, you, you come in. Cause I was mad at the doctor. She's the one that, <laughs> she's the one that said that I had cancer. But Nurse Nancy, I never forget this white woman grabbed my hand and the anxiety and the fear that I had in me at that particular point left mm -hmm. immediately. And, and, and this is a white woman and I'm white men. I hate it, but white women, I totally despise, bro. Mm -hmm. But she grabbed my hand and she said, it's going to be all right. She said, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, it's, it, it's bad. She said, I want you to know it's bad. She said, but it's not over. And mm -hmm. she said, it's going to be, it's going to be okay. She said, is it okay that I get the doctor to come back in? And I nodded and said, yes. So she brought, forgot the doctor was a, was a sister. I forgot her name. She came in and she then began to start telling me the stage, the steps of what's going to happen next. I was at the Georgia Cancer Center. I had to go there uh, and at um, the hospital on the cab, in the cab, the cab medical, because I had to get, I had biopsies, brother. I had, uh, I had to get a port put in my chest because the port that they put in your chest, they can either put in your arm or in your chest. They put it in your chest, it gets to your bloodstream much quicker because they're gonna be giving you the medicine, the chemo is what they're gonna put in this port. So after I got the port put in my chest, I, my mother, bless her heart, uh, that woman, mothers are just remarkable, man. Mothers, mothers, mothers. Because one thing about my mom, man, although there was people around me, my mother never allowed people to come around me that made me feel, that felt sorry for me. Mm. Uh, my mother, I used to tell the people, why are you looking sad? You're not the one with cancer. Mm, mm. It got so bad. Every, every, I had pneumonia, walking pneumonia, double pneumonia. I had meningitis, everything that you could possibly imagine doing that spit there from, from May up into December. I must have had everything. You understand? It had gotten so bad. But what kept me focused, Brother Josh, and I'll never forget, it is focusing in on Minister Farrakhan. Mm. It is the minister. It wasn't a law. I got to be honest with you, brother, because I'm thinking a law is too far for me to reach. You understand? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go at Minister Far because Minister Farrakhan had gone through uh, some illnesses that could have very easily took him up out of here. And I never forget Minister Farrakhan saying that during all of the time that he was going through what he was going through, not one time that he asked God, Allah, to spare his life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, here's the thing. I'm bleeding from every, must have been from every hole in my body. You understand? It was really bad. I'm, I'm having these. I laugh at it now, but I got them grown folk, grow uh, uh, pampers. I'm having to put on the pins because, you understand, it was, it, it was atrocious for me during that time, man. And if you have never gone through chemotherapy, if you've never gone through that, brother, that is some of the most atrocious, a horrible stuff that you can go to because you got multiple medicines in your body that the medicine is so strong that it kills the cancer cells, but it also kills other cells too. And they tell you after you've gone through chemo, you're not really to function a day or so after that because you're just not coherent. You just get, you're not to yourself. So after I would go through, I went seven bouts of chemo when every Thursday at the Georgia Cancer Center, out in uh, Decatur, Latonia, actually, uh, and every time I would go, one of the brothers from Let Us Make Man would come and sit with me, uh, come and sit with me because they would sit with me for a whole day until I began to start kind of coming around, man. But it was the worst time in my life, you understand, because at that point, I really thought that I was going to get up out of here. I never forget I had my children with me and I had to tell my then 12 year old son uh, that your, and my 10 year old daughter and my eight year old daughter that your father have cancer. And I begin to start making arrangements for them in the event that I could no longer be here uh, to, uh, you know, here. And I asked a lot, you know, I'm not going to ask you to spare my life. I just ask you to give me time to get my business in order so that my children will not have to suffer in the event it is my time to leave here because I really didn't 
care at that point one way or the other. I was so hurting, bro. I thought death would be sweeter uh, than to be living through all of the pain and the agony that uh, cancer had on us, man. It was, it was horrible. I would not wish that on my worst enemy, you understand, because of the things that you go through, just the psychological things that you go through knowing that there's something that's very easily can put you up out of here. And I never forget, my doctor said, brother, he said, what is your diet like? Uh, because I had begun to start getting much better from their perspective sooner than what they thought. Mm. I, I'm under the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan, and they minister, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote two books, How to Eat to Live, and I did not eat anything during that time there but bean soup. Mm, mm. 15, I never forget. Sister Zahira, she was Sister Cassandra at that point. Sister Miriam, the sisterhood, you understand, would provide food for me to eat. You understand, it was nothing but bean soup, cream and wheat muffins, and I can, can stand milk. You understand? But they made me drink this raw, this raw milk. You understand? Mm. So I was able to begin to start getting myself a little stronger, but before being diagnosed and getting stronger, that was a horrible time in my life that when you came to visit me, you had to put on that half mask, everything, because I was just so contagious because I had meningitis as well too. And that stuff could get you up out of here real quick, uh, you see. So that must have been the most difficult time in my development but I never asked God to spare my life because I had the example of Minister Farrakhan who was much older than me and was going through what he was going through. And God brought him safely over. And if it was my time to get up out of here, I salute. I thank Allah for the time. I was 42, I think, 41, 40, I think I was 42. And if it was my time to leave, then I thank Allah for the time that he gave me uh, on earth. And I was... I was not remorseful, mm. uh, but difficult time for me. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. I'm glad that you you strong. And you oh, you all yes, praises sir. be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Brother Ray, what has been the greatest joy in your life? The teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, brother. The mm. day that I met Brother Tony, I think that besides being born, I don't know how great that was because I don't know that about that. But being born in the name, being born again, had to have been the greatest moments of my life uh, simply because I'm coming into something that I had no idea that existed, but I see the changes that's taking place in my life. So that would be the greatest moment. And the second greatest moment was meeting the minister, mm. meeting the minister for the first time and then meeting him many more times after that. We was in the airport one time meeting the minister. See, what people don't understand is I asked Minister Farrakhan to come to it. Your father was there. Uh, uh, Brother Jabril was there. Brother Khalid was there. All of them was there. I'm a student at Clark. And I asked Brother Minister, I said, that's 10,000 of us that want you. We had gotten a petition, about 9,500 signatures on it. And I said, Brother Minister, we really want you to come to Atlanta, and we want you to come to our campus. And i never forget, Brother Van, he said, Brother Van, did you hear Brother Ray? He mm. said, Brother Ray invited me to his campus. And uh, he said, I'm coming. And I said, when Minister Farquhar came to Atlanta, I said, okay, what y'all Negro think? I, I'm the reason why they... <laughs> I'm the reason why the minister came uh, to, and he came to the AU Center, and he spoke at ITC. Uh, so that, those are some of the greatest memories, uh, profound moments of my life, man. Yes, sir. And and did you, okay, so praise be to Allah. Thank you, everyone, who's showing love. So I, as many, you come in from junior February, whatever you, 18, 23, college age, and you, the old verse, it's still the same thing. It's always going, I ain't say it's always, but it's that's been, you know, date since prior to 75. It is what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, I have I have been able for some to work out some of the men, some of that with some of the people who are older than me. And I was like, man, you know, I we had our energy, you had yours, you know, it, 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 
were you ever able to work out certain things with Minister Van and things of that nature? Oh, my God. Yes, Brother Josh. Here's the thing. Brother Van, I love him tremendously. Now, I, I'm going to got to be honest with you, brother, because that's the type of brother that I am. I still hold some resentment for Brother Sadiq. <laughs> I know Brother Sadiq yes. transitioned. Yes, sir. I'm working on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but Brother Van, brother, because of the work that I do down in Griffin, Brother Van is often watches what I'm what I'm doing down here. Mm, mm. That brother, if I was the regional minister, here's what Brother Van would say to me, because I'm doing quite a bit down here. He said, I would just give you the city. Uh, mm. You understand? So Brother Van and I, I was able to know what Brother Van was taking me through and others. He was training us and he was developing us. Although we thought it was pain and hurt and all of that. I don't know why. I don't know what he wanted to do. I never forget wanting to kill him and Brother Sadiq and all of that. Brother, brother, God is my witness. Brother Far yeah. come with the room with the minister. And Allah, God is my witness. And because of the team that I had, we had a squad, Brother Josh. Mm -hmm. We was praying, man, uh, to the point where I would know who was coming up the stairs because we all lived together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and two bedroom house, we all lived together. And Brother Brother Farrakhan said to us, as I had already planned uh, to take a couple of people out in the nation, he said, as long as he's my minister, He's not to be touched. Mm. He's, now he didn't call no names. I didn't I believe that's how I know he reads mine, Brother John. I'm in the room and he said that some of you don't agree with some of the things that's going on. He said, but as long as he's my minister, mm, mm. not to be touched. I called, we had them next cell phone at that particular point. We didn't have cell phone, we had next cell. Mm. I called down to Atlanta. God is my witness. I'm lying. I'm not having this conversation with you. I said, bro, y'all better abort that. Mm -hmm. And I was to apologize. I went to a law brother and I apologized to the God for even the thought to want to do harm to somebody that I did not understand. And I know 35 years later, that's how long I've been in the nation. I salute Brother Van and I'm learning how to halfway salute Brother Sadiq for the training that they gave me out of yes. the pain I thought I was in at that particular point, you understand, that made me a better individual because it taught me how to treat people the way that I would want people to treat me. So yeah, uh, I, I, if I see Brother Van right now, I just give him a big old hug, man, uh, and thank my brother for, for doing for me what I didn't know he did until I got a little older. All oh, praise due to a lot. Beautiful, uh, Brother Ray. I just had to ask because that sometimes is it's, it's not, it doesn't have atonement and resolve. And I thank Minister Van for always showing me love. And he knew he knew me before I was born. He That's told right. me my grandma, my mom. I'm, I'm like, what? He's like, man, I knew from Ohio. I knew way back, you know. So I, you know, so that's Minister Van and his family, all praises due to a lot. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And uh, I'm glad that you all were able to uh grow and you know, process and work everything out. I, here's a question I ask all of the guests, Brother Ray. What type of music do you enjoy listening to, sir? Oh, man, I'm a hip hopper. Let me okay. just say up. Let me tell you. I know. I'm straight up hip hop. But I love, but here's the thing. I, because I'm in the entertainment business, I love all genres of music. I love country. I love, I love. One thing I can't get with this hard rock stuff. But okay. hip hop is my old school hip hop. Not this crap that they call hip hop today. I don't know what that mess is. But hip hop is my is is I just love I love me some some old school messaging hip hop brother because that's the era that I came up under I was born when I was here when hip hop uh, hit the scene and then I saw the evolution and the destruction of hip hop but that's 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 one of my best that's it hip hop yes hip -hop. Sir, great music, uh, excellent excellent all right wonderful and we have one more question for you I just want to make sure on behalf of myself my family and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast that we thank you, Brother Ray. Thank a lot for your many sacrifices, the sacrifices of your family. Um, shout out to Sharif, you know, your son, and just shout out to everybody and uh, may Allah continue to bless you. All of the work that you all are doing, how can we show love and support to your nonprofits? Let us make, man, all of the organizations that you are part of, how can we show love and support to them? 
well, here's what we're doing. Let us make man have been in existence for over 18 years now. A group of uh, professional brothers have decided that we ain't going to, we're not going to sit by and talk about it. Uh, you see, other than the nation, the nation of Islam, the nation of Islam, the brotherhood of the of the let us make man is almost equal to that of the nation of Islam. Mm, so, mm. Annually, of course, we have our annual fundraising drives whereby we are able to send. Uh, we have sent hundreds and have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars sending uh, 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 high school seniors to school, giving them a scholarship every year. Uh, that's the Let Us Make Man piece. And then the nonprofit that we have, the emergency relief project that we're doing down in my hometown. See, when I went back home, I believe what Minister Farrakhan says, that if you got truth, then you should not have to ask for permission to go and work out in the truth that God has given you. So go up there and raise the flag and the banner of Islam. You ain't got the necessary say that that is long. Just teach what the Honorable Minister Lil Farrakhan tell us that Islam, Christianity, nor Buddhism is the best religion. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. So the nonprofit that we have, the Emergency Relief Project, where we're actually training young brothers, teenagers, from the ages of 13 to 17, and they go through a 10-week rigorous training. These individuals are introduced to financial literacy, history, uh, uh, black history, they're, int they're, they're introduced into discipline. Uh, I bring millionaires down to talk with them. No female can come and talk to them. This is specifically an all brothers thing because most of these young brothers that we have in, uh, in the organization comes from a single parent and that's a mother. So they got a lot of mother in them. What we want to do is balance the mother in them the femininity that's in them would allow the masculinity. So I tell them all, the basis of what I teach is what I have been taught that made me the man that I am. And that is the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught to us by Minister Farrakhan. It may not necessarily be packaged in the same way that we package the FOI class, but there ain't no doubt that the fundamentals and the foundations of what's being taught there. So that's pretty much what it is that we got going on down there, brother. They can uh, 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 go out and they can look us up. We on on social media. Uh, they can email us emergencyreliefproject.org and send us a message, man, to see how you know you can best help. Uh, what we got going on. The bottom line is we're going to do the work. Uh, you understand, Minister Farrakhan said somebody got to do it. Why don't you get the big name for doing it? <laughs> all praise due to all our excellent. Last question for you, brother Ray. Thank you all who are watching. What would you like your legacy to be, sir? Wow. I heard Minister Farrakhan once say that uh, it's arrogant men that look for legacies. Uh, if I would want anybody to, and when I leave and transition, I would like for them to say about Brother Ray that no matter what you said or did or to that brother, he was a true brother. And he loved the brotherhood more than he loved himself and are willing to die on his sword to help not just the big brothers, the, the leadership, but the ordinary man. So if there's anything that, that I would like for people to remember me is, is that I love the brotherhood and would fight uh, to keep that love emanating like Brother Tony or Brother Malik taught us when I first entered the nation. All oh, praises so loud. Beautiful, excellent, Brother Ray. Thank you all for watching. Can't wait to put this on YouTube. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. May Allah continue to bless you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you very much.